All right, guys, uh, we, we need to talk about Steve Jobs. Lots of people hate him. Lots of people love him. Uh, most people that were like Steve Jobs, if you've ever, you know, watch people or watch this kind of thing that happens, uh, we're, we're jerks. People that are largely driven um, you, you usually just seem to not have much patience with the rest of us. And so um, they are. Steve Jobs is, was very much known as jerk. And it's, you know, not, not nice to speak of the, the dead because he is dead. Uh, but he, he had a way of viewing things and uh, lots of people did not appreciate that. Some people say he's just a really good salesman. Uh, which is false, and some people say he's, he was a visionary, which in some ways is true, in other ways is not. And that happens a lot in our society. Uh, why people in computers or people across the globe that think they're in computers uh, have to choose a side, I don't know. Uh, Technology is not a football game or basketball game, so you can irrationally hate the Steelers, um, but you shouldn't irrationally hate anything is the truth. Uh, and lots of people do, right? They just irrationally, they just hate Apple. Uh, their, their new processors have come out uh, as I showed in the last video and there's tons of hate. You know, like Apple sucks and Apple's this. And it's like, you know, just love technology for what it is. Hope that there's a lot of competition so that you get the best product possible. Um, but what I'm going to show you here is is the idea or the concept that the technology we use today is not all of a sudden something that that happened that's not the way it happens and as you've watched the machine that, that changed the world you know that it's, it's taken years decades for that to happen well it isn't any different with with our now established computing system so way back when and i'm not getting into you know stuff i've already mentioned before but wozniak and steve jobs were you know friends they lived on the same street and they liked each other and they hung around with each other and they're both geniuses by right was still alive and it's still seen as this this genius he really was um, really is a super smart guy you know he was the one that made the apple computer he was the one that did that with some input from steve jobs so i don't want to say he steve jobs did nothing but it was steve jobs that had the the audacity to believe that this was something revolutionary and that lots of people would, would buy it. So they made a good team. I don't know if I mentioned this in a video, but I mentioned it in class that, that the truth of the matter is, is that Steve Jobs' worst mistake that he ever made was the Mac computer. And why it was the worst is because he, he was, I mean, look at how young these guys are. I mean, I know they probably look old to you, but they're your age, right? They're, they're the college age kids at this point and they're millionaires and um, Steve Jobs goes off and he sees that stuff that's happening at Xerox because they they've invited him over to see it uh, and he actually even tells the fact that he uh, was so enamored with the graphical user interface that he didn't even notice the networking that was happening that would become later this big huge thing uh, now, had he gone to college, right, he would have learned that. Uh, you know, where did we first see the graphical interface? Where did we see the first use of a mouse? Think about it. If you can't remember, it's the mother of all demos, right? He lived right where this guy worked, right? Uh, that's, that was there. Now, as he tells the story, you know, we have the first usable mouse. You know, he goes out there and he had the ability, people say, I never met him in person, but he had the ability uh, to really sell you on what he saw, right? So he was able to sell you on the way he viewed. So good thing he didn't go into politics, right? Uh, in any case, they got together and made a great team. And then he later screwed it all up because he kept pushing the Mac computer. And uh, this just just a, a little recap, if I can get under my controls there. The Apple II GS was a graphical user system. And if you ever look at one of those systems, you'll realize it looks like a Mac, except it's got color. It's really cool. 
And this was, of course, released in like 85, 86, I think it was 85. And as I've mentioned, Steve Jobs was not the only one in the world that was doing this, right? They were doing this over on the Mega team. They were doing it, even Windows. If you look up Windows 1 and when they would started making that, right? Everybody knew it was going graphical, even though Steve Jobs tries to portray it as, you know, he was the only one that knew. Actually, never says that, but <clears throat> I think it's portrayed that way. And anyway, uh, so what was he good for? What what did happen? If If I'm saying that really his inexperience as a 20-year-old uh, didn't help him believe that we need to take the Apple II, our customer base, and bring them forward into this age. But building a machine that's compatible with the Apple II and then adding on to it, he didn't see any of that. Instead, he went out and said, hey, guys, you need to buy a new $3,500 computer. This is the future. Come and do this. What? I just spent $3,000, you know, with software and everything to get what I have, and now you want me to no. Right. So I mentioned that that's really, even if Bill Gates didn't know, and I think he's, he was a smart enough marketer to understand that whatever you've got running in a business like Lotus one, two, three, and you spent as a business, $10,000 on tons of that software, you want that to continue to work 10 years later because you spent so much money on it. Uh, and that's what he did. Right. DOS was compatible, Windows was compatible, they were all compatible over with Steve Jobs. Ah, screw that, right? And as I mentioned, I, again, I don't know if I mentioned this in a video, this machine was really cool. It actually had an Apple, a full Apple II computer because by that time, right, so much had changed in the industry. You have this chip in there on a little tiny board and it was an Apple II computer. And so when you wanted to do something just totally Apple II, not new and fancy, you could just click on it and it would run on that piece of hardware. Gosh, you think about <clears throat> the technology that we could have had <laughs> so much earlier had Steve Jobs really understood how things were going to work. So where does he really come into play? What happens? Well, he, he leaves because he gets fired as CEO, and he's really pissed off about it, so he sells all of his stock for a loss because, as you can imagine, um, Wozniak is kind of fading out, right? He's He's – going off to do other things. And Steve Jobs was kind of the face of the company and now he's leaving. So stock just crashes. Like is Apple going to be dead in two years? You know, cause he left, he sells all the stock and he goes on to build unoriginally the next computer. <laughs> okay. So the name was unoriginal, but basically they sat down as a big think tank. Um, and that's where his genius starts to come in as is really understanding what do people want to see? What do they want uh, to do with these things? How can we take it to the next level? And, and that's what he went off to do. And I had no idea that that's what happened at the time. You know, I'm using my windows and, and all of that stuff uh, by this time. And then it isn't until later that the internet really gets going and I go out and read and I find out, holy cow, basically everything that I ever thought Microsoft did that was just really cool and incredible Steve Jobs and his team did on the next computer. They did it all here first. I had no idea. Uh, email systems where you could just drag and drop stuff across, boom, 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 boom. I know all of you think oh, that's no big deal, but that was a big deal back then. Being able to take a picture like this, drag it from this window and dump it in that window. What? What? You can't do that kind of crap. They did all that. Uh, as a matter of fact, in another class, if you take my 103, you find out that Tim Berners-Lee, uh, right, he developed HTTP, he developed HTML, he developed a web browser, and he gave that out and said, let's, let's make the internet something more than a command line interface. And of course, that just flourished. He was using what they call is a Next Cube. It was a cube computer, and it ran the Next OS. That's what he was using, because Next computers were used a lot way out there in the real scientific -y communities where they would pay more money because this was on a RISC processor, not a CISC processor. And so all of the stuff he does over there on the next computer becomes something that is, is used in Windows. So basically, again, I had no idea, and they would disagree, I'm sure, 
but basically um, they would go and look and say, hey, what do we need to put into our Windows uh, NT? What do we need to put into our Windows 2000? What do we need to put into Windows XP? And they would just look at what was happening on the next computer where they were just trying to innovate and do things. And they go, yeah, let's do that. That's what we want to do. So it just got stolen. Um, technology doesn't normally just appear. Instead, what happens is very smart people look at a problem and say, this is really an issue. It really doesn't work well. Tim Berners-Lee is one of those people. Talk about him a little more. You know, what we're using as the internet is not that great. It's a command line interface. Let's do something better, right? And he gets his ideas from the next computer. And that computer is actually um, in a museum someplace. I don't know where. But that's the next cube. It was just a computer built like a cube and ran the next OS. Uh, so some of the other interesting things about um, Steve Jobs that you want might want to know. Of course, when he comes back, he really does save the company. And he does it in a way that angers a lot of people, to tell you the truth. Um, he um, cuts off a lot of things. Like, again, they owned a, a massive amount of the ARM processor, and they sold all of that stock to actually be able to pay the bills. Um, his love for music is what really got the iPod going. And, and you'll often see that, you know, people that are creative in that way have these things that they, they want to do. They, they combine the interests that they have. And his music was an interest. So when he saw the, these music players coming out, he's like, that is so cool. That is the way that music's going. And, you know, you just carry a device with you and you have thousands and thousands of songs. Uh, he wasn't the one that thought that up. He was the one that made it work and was heavily involved in making it work. And that's, and that is the truth. He was, he basically said, Hey, we need to make something called it the iPod, right? Everything was internet. We want to make sure you understand this is an internet capable device. So it's an iPod over there at, at IBM. It was E everything was E right. Cause it was electronic. And so they had email. Oh yeah. Well, we got E calendar too. You know, it was a marketing thing. But in any case, uh, he, there's actually recordings out there that you can listen to where he goes and talks to, I think he's in Colorado at a college, and he talks about having handheld devices that are connected wirelessly through wireless networking and being able to compute and do everything that you need to do on those devices. And, and that is revolutionary. That Not everybody was thinking that way. You can go back and do some research, and there's probably about five or six people in the world that were thinking of how that would affect our society and he was one of those and really what screwed it up for him was really pushing the Mac computer and instead of really understanding those little points that I'm trying to teach you guys and understanding that wait a minute I have this huge computer base why don't I just take them on the ride with me so the next Apple will do this and the next one after that will do that and you take them along with you and that really you know got him fired uh, but that didn't stop his innovation. He went over and and did the next computer thing. And most people don't know where Pixar came from. And no, it wasn't Steve Jobs. Pixar was actually uh, an ILM thing. It was actually a LucasArts thing. It was an ILM. But they were looking at the technology for what could we do with this. And eventually LucasArts um, examined it and was like, you know, we got ILM, ILM, that's really the direction we're going, so I'm going to sell this off. And Steve Jobs looked at what, what it was doing. They, you know, they had a little bit of that, that um, movie prepared, uh, Toy Story. And he was like, wow, this is great. And he, he invested so much money. In, and you can watch things on that that they'll talk about how if it wasn't for them, there would be no, wasn't for him, there would be no Pixar and at the same time, it drove them nuts because he would come in and this is the way it's going to be, you know, even when he was wrong. Um, but yeah, he, Pixar. And, and that's in itself an interesting story, right? Because Disney gets in so much trouble that they buy Pixar. But if you really look at the transaction, it was Pixar that was buying Disney. So uh, Steve Jobs' wife now, she owns most of Disney. <laughs> How that worked out. But anyway... Steve Jobs was not just a good salesman. He was a very good salesman, but he was also somebody that could say, hey, this is 
the future. And that's why he was very well respected. Lots of people um, understood that he analyzed things and did things and said, this is the future. Bill Gates, I see as a genius in his own right, but he, he didn't have that same understanding of people. So he, he, he um, has definitely done a lot more good. He had he, not so single-minded, I guess is what I would say. Anyway, I am blabbering on, so I will stop this and you can write some notes over.